السلام علیکم ایوری ون السلام علیکم شداد صاحب وعلیکم السلام جی وی آر رائٹ آن ٹائم الیون او کلاک بہرین ٹائم آئی تھینک یو ایوری ون ہو ایور ہیز جوائن ان سو فار آئی تھنک سم پیپل مے جوائن ان سم ٹائم ایز ویل تھینک یو فار ٹیکنگ آؤٹ ٹائم فرام یور بیزی اسکیجولس شہزاد صاحب کا انٹروڈکشن بات بڑی لمبی کی جا سکتی ہے لیکن جسٹ بریفلی فائیو مے سے Uh, he is someone who has uh, dedicated a big part of his life so far uh, 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 learning uh, religion in detail mashallah he is a, a phd in history of quran uh, we must have seen his works so must have listened to him on youtube i personally have benefited from his book on parenting uh, a good human uh, etc there are I think he has written over 18 books جسے کافی لوگ لوگوں نے بینیفٹ کیا ہے اینڈ آئی ایم گریٹ فل کہ انہوں نے ہمارے لیے ٹائم نکالا اور اسپیشلی ہمارے بحرین کے دوستوں کے لیے آج ہم نے یہ سیشن رکھا ہے ود اے اسپیسیفک فوکس آن دا ٹاپک وچ از میسی پیرنٹنگ اینڈ اس لیے ہم نے ریکویسٹ کیا تھا کہ ہو ایور اف آر فرینڈس کین جوائن دس اسپیسیفک سیشن with their uh, adult kids as well so that would be very helpful so thank you all for taking out time and uh, uh, i'll pass on i'll request shahzad sahab to please proceed thank you bismillahir rahmanir rahim <clears throat> assalam alaikum my dear uh, parents and uh, young adults who are prospective parents uh, the the discussion that we are going to have today is uh, presumably we're going to be very frank i'd like to be very direct and <clears throat> the reason is that of course uh, today that we are facing the, the problems that we are facing today a number of them revolve around uh, what we call messy parenting and i think that there are a number of issues that uh, as parents we need to address and actually what has happened is that uh, i see parents around the world around the globe complaining a lot about their children about their adult children that they don't listen to them that they have their own life to live that they don't they don't get involved in our social activities they have entirely different world view and uh, things go on and on and there is this uh, wide uh, communication gap between the parents and the children and i see often uh, that the parents find themselves in a spot of bother they do think that uh, as parents they have this right that their children should uh, at least respect them and more than that uh, they should uh, behave according to their wishes but the the thing that i would like to state i am a parent myself uh, that i think the number of uh, allegations uh, so to speak that we make against our children or the complaints that we have against our children uh, they owe much to what i call as i just said messy parenting and a wrong concept of parenting and when we have this concept of parenting or the one that we have actually inherited from our own uh, uh, parents and our grandparents uh, we actually are trying to repeat the same pattern with our own children and because of the fact that the world view the social milieu has changed so drastically in the last 2 or 3 decades that uh, we are really at loss as, as parents because we have the same model of parenting before ourselves as the ones we uh, are used to or were used to when our own uh, parents were dealing with us and there were a number of daring mistakes may i say with full respect uh, in that particular model and i think that today uh, it is high time to realize that as parents we need to uh, make amends for those mistakes no don't repeat those mistakes and as far as possible groom uh, young minds and young children in a way that they become extremely responsible parents so i think that uh, the starting point here would be to discuss some of our common faults as parents and some of our common uh, mistakes that we do as parenting so you see what has happened here is that parenting i would say is is a skill it's an art that we need to learn it's not something that we i mean just uh, learn out of experience and more often than not what we do is that we make grave mistakes with our first child maybe the second child also and the third child at that by the time we reach our third child if ever we have a third child then we are slightly better parents and we are exceptionally good grandparents because you see what has happened is that uh, over a period of one or two or three children the mistakes that we have made we realize those mistakes and then we try to be better grandparents but then you see 
uh, it's good that we still realize, but the fact is that uh, we should have done this in the case of our own children as well. And uh, we have lost that time where we just cannot recover that time. So I think that as responsible citizens, responsible parents, uh, we need to, first of all, understand that parenting is an art. It's a skill that we need to learn. And personally, I have been recommending a lot of institutions and a lot of uh, people I come across who are who belong to the academia that parenting should be taught as a subject in college, maybe even in high school, because there are certain things which need a little more exposure. Uh, there are certain things which need more time uh, for them to infiltrate in their minds. So um, maybe a couple of courses uh, would really help. And if we are able to I mean, engage something like that or prepare something like that, then we would be inshallah, hopefully be better parents. And precisely for this reason, as Anza just pointed out, I have had the opportunity uh, to write a book on parenting and it's called Modern Challenges to Parenting. And the reason, of course, being that in the last 15 or 20 years, uh, I've been lecturing uh, in various uh, countries and in various venues, on various venues, and I've found out that uh, this is something, this is some experience that I have uh, learned and I must transfer it to parents so that uh, maybe together, uh, we can do something for the cause of parenting. So as I, as I said, that uh, the, the starting point of uh, this uh, skill learning would be to first of all analyze some of the basic mistakes that we do as parents. And I'm I don't know, but I do think that uh, people who are watching uh, they have their adult children sitting with them, uh, the young minds with them. So uh, if I am slightly more straight, and if I'm slightly more blunt, please forgive me for that because you see uh, this is something that has to be put across in times in not so many words and uh, in a very direct manner. And at the same time, uh, it has to be taken in the right perspective that this is like self-criticism. This is something um, uh, I would say as constructive criticism uh, in which we need to learn uh, some of the techniques of parenting. So the first thing that I start off with is uh, that as parents, the first grave mistake that we have witnessed so many parents uh, doing, including myself, I dare say, is that uh, we quarrel in front of our children. I mean, this, the husband and wife, they don't realize that uh, when they have a difference of opinion, this is something to be resolved in, in uh, behind closed doors uh, in their own bedroom. They must chalk out a plan of conflict res resolution whenever there is a conflict. But it is extremely lethal, extremely lethal that uh, you uh, have this uh, quarrel, uh, amongst yourselves and your children are witnessing uh, whatever you're saying. And I've seen not only quarrels taking place amongst parents, but at times there is this thing, this phenomena called family feud, in which we have sides being taken. For example, the father and the daughter would be on one side and the son and the mother typically would be on one side. And, and then it would be quite a, a chaotic situation. It would play havoc on the minds. Uh, so, so some years ago when I was actually counseling some of my some of the teenagers i mean i'd also do teenage counseling so the, the the concept of marriage actually came up and it was just a casual discussion and i was surprised to know that there was there was a boy i think it was about 12 years old and the girl she was about 14 years old and suddenly uh, both of them in their own way and they said that well uncle we are not going to marry at all and after a little more discussion i came to realize that one of the very basic reasons which had put them off from marriage was that they often found their own parents quarreling and quibbling and complaining and calling names and uh, I mean even abusing one another in front of their children which is of course something which has a very telling effect it's a very very grave effect that it can have uh, on our on, on the minds of the of our children we don't realize this at times but you see what happens is that uh, as their psyche is sh shaping up as their uh, approach towards life is being built when they see that one of their dearest relations, uh, I mean, the, the, they can be nothing more closer to you than your own parents. When they see that they are uh, po pointing to one another, they're calling names or they're quibbling or they're always daggers drawn, uh, it doesn't have a, a smooth effect on their psyche. So the first thing that we need to change drastically, if not already, is that we must think and you must realize that, you see, yes, in marriage, there are problems, there are issues. Uh, no, no one is going to be perfect. And at, at the same time, there could be difference of opinion, but then they have to be resolved 
uh, there has to be a conflict resolution strategy which the spouses develop is specific to each spouse you can have a number of options and number of options can be suggested as well but the point here that I'm, I'm making is that that has to be done mutually between the husband and the wife it should never come out as a as a loud difference i mean difference of opinion is fine it's absolutely okay if a father and a mother have a difference of opinion because that's something which is quite natural every human being has a right to that but fighting over a particular issue uh, and using uh, foul language that is absolutely i mean it's, it's not on so this, this is my first submission that uh, this is this is of utmost importance that this harmony between the parents in spite of having a difference of opinion is something that has to be worked and as i said uh, each set of parents could have a different conflict resolution strategy but uh, as a side i would also suggest that as soon as people get married the first thing that they need to sit and work on is that if there is going to be a difference of opinion then what exactly is the way out to that difference of opinion and how would we go on resolving that and how we would be controlling our temper so losing our temper uh, and not i mean and being rash and having all sorts of uh, uh, whimsical comments that we make uh, uh, between ourselves is something that ha that has to be checked and there are studies you would be surprised to know i mean this is really i was it was a surprise to me as well when i started uh, starting on this subject that even in even when the, a child is in the womb of her of his or her mother uh even then there are certain effects there are certain sounds which it registers the brain registers and if they are i mean beyond a certain frequency it has a telling effect on the mind of that i mean not yet born fetus as well so studies have shown that children i mean even when they are not born they do have this tendency in their own minds there are certain signals that go to their minds and when they are i mean they are just young toddlers for example one year old or two year old uh, parents think that if they are quarreling with one other they have their their debate uh, the child is not going to register anything but mind you this is not the case science tells us that even at that stage i mean i've just talked about the stage in which the the child is not even born so if when the child has been born and he's not very conscious i mean he's still very young even then that this has to be avoided so this, this is the first thing that we have to really put our foot down to and uh, we must we must uh, at all cost avoid and the second thing you know, the second mistake or the second common mistake that we parents do make uh, is that uh, we actually uh, taunt our children and we call them with pet names which are not befitting right? let me use this this uh, urdu jargon we say oh chote oh morte oh Lambe, all these things which which make which makes uh, the child. I mean, it could be a fun time for you, but it is really, really very badly uh, affecting the child's psyche. And uh, something very similar to this phenomena uh, of taunting is that you compare your children to either one another or to maybe their cousins or to their friends, especially if they are slow learners. So you see, uh, what happens is that if your child is not performing up to the mark. Uh, you start complaining or you start taunting or you start making fun of him or her. And what you typically say is that, look, just look at your look at your sister, look at your elder brother, look at your cousin, look at your uh, friend there and look how he, high scores he gets. Look how a high achiever he is or she is. And look at you. You're just a dunce. You're just a stupid, silly person. So you see, this is again has to be checked. If your child is a slow learner, you need to realize that there is something wrong somewhere else. and in many a case, you'll find that the teacher has a bad attitude. Maybe the subject is not very, uh, I mean, he's not liked by the child. And at times the child has a different proclivity and he needs more time, extra time. And instead of criticizing your child, it is here that you need to play your role and supplement the teaching of, uh, I mean, that subject in that, in that particular subject in which your uh, child is a slow learner and, and, and start complimenting him giving him or her more time so that uh, if the slow learning is, is is something that could be uh, speeded up then of course uh, this is an opportunity to do that so you see in germany there is this very good system that they have evolved what they do is that they divide children after their primary school into two or three branches they know that there is a branch i mean there's a streak of people who are good they're going to be good academicians so this the academia line is separated and then they know that there are people who are more good 
I mean, they're more technically sound and they do would like to do something from their hands, like, like would be technicians. So they separate them in the, at the primary level. And then there are sportsmen, people who are good at sports. So at a very young age, what they do is that they select these three streams so that instead of having that selection at that many, at that college level, when it's literally too late, you divide them very earlier on. And for this, they have devised beautiful aptitude tests so that the early aptitude of a child could easily uh, make him select something for which he has been made of or which she has been made of. Imagine if you are doing something in which you really relish that thing, you got, you're going to go make a big difference in that. So you see, this making of difference is one of the reasons when we don't we, we don't do our groundwork here, we don't find out the aptitude of our child, we insist that he should always study this subject or that subject. And hence, without realizing that our child could be gifted in some other field, we start pushing him in the opposite field, him or her. So it is of its essence that uh, parents should realize the potential of their child. They are beautifully penned out, documented aptitude tests at a very early age, you can find out what exactly your child has been blessed. So you see, every single person from God has been given, I mean, a child has been given some quality or the other, some aptitude or the other, in which he or she can outshine. It's just a question of discovering that potential. It's just a question of discovering uh, uh, that particular aptitude at the right time. And if you do so, you can really push your child in the right direction and he can and she can make a real difference uh, because of the fact that he or she has been geared for that. So remember uh, famously what Socrates said, the famous philosophy said, know thyself. So one of the things that as parents we can do instead of complaining, instead of taunting our children, instead of uh, having them uh, go through this historic time, uh, we find out what exactly are they made for. And this aptitude then is something which also manifests in their hobbies. So commonly, a child would be doing something that he or she is made of as hobbies. So this is one marker or one benchmark from which you can gauge what your child can do. But as I said, there are specialized tests at a very young age. If you are able to do that, then it can really make a huge difference uh, in the life of your child. Einstein, you must be knowing, had famously remarked that uh, genius is 1% inspiration and he is 99% in, uh, perspiration, which means that the God gifted element could be just a couple of percents, but the other element is hard work. So if you are able to find out the right track for your child, even if he or she's not very well gifted from God, hard work can make up for that. So you see, if at a very early age, like for example, when the child is eight or nine years old, primary school, if you're able to do that, you can really make a real difference in his or her life. So always remember that the Almighty has blessed every single soul on this earth with some trait or the other in which he or she can outshine. We not, I mean, everyone cannot become a Newton or an Einstein or a Stephen Hawking, but yes, uh, at the second level, they can go very high and they can literally produce uh, astounding results. So this is the second thing that I'd like to bring to your notice that if your child is a slow learner, if your child is not performing well, uh, and even before that, if I mean, even before this is, discovery is made, do come forward and go through those uh, personality tests. I myself has, have also designed this uh, one of these tests and I can send it to you so that you can find out what exactly your child can do best. And if the school is not cooperating, maybe, or if there are certain subjects that, that, which he or she is bound uh, to study, then there could be other supplementary things that you as a parent could help your child to do. So the second thing I would say is helping your child find his or her real potential, her real aptitude, the thing that he or she has been made of, and not taunting, not taking names, not keeping those pet names, which are absolutely humiliating, disparaging. Imagine someone, someone calling ourselves with these names, how bad we would feel. So please put let's put a stop to this and uh, try to discover the potential. And also let me uh, tell you this, that it's never too late in life to discover potential of your children. If they are grown up children, like, let's say they've entered their teens or they have become young adults, even then this aptitude finding is going to help them. And I, let me also add this to you that as parents also, you yourself, and for you also, it's not that late. You can go to that aptitude test because even if you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s, 
uh, you can still be people who can contribute in life by judging and by gauging who you are yourself from inside. So it's something that's going to help not only your children, this, this uh, aptitude test, it's going to help yourself as well. And when it's going to help you, you'll feel, you'll feel the difference in your own life. You'll feel more satisfied. You'll feel that you're con contributing something according to what you have been made by God. So this is of paramount importance. The third thing that I'd like to pro uh, bring to your notice is uh, what, again, I call the, is the art of criticism. You see, criticism comes naturally to all of us. We are always criticizing people around us, people uh, not even present. And uh, if we don't find anything else to criticize, we, we start criticizing the weather, we start criticizing our surroundings. So criticism is something which is which we are born with. And lo and behold, this is something that we go do frequently with our children as well. They are the grown-up children. They could be children who are entering uh, mature age. <clears throat> so there is a there is a method to everything. And the method here, I would like to say, is that uh, I mean, constructive criticism is always good. And we have to learn that if your if our child makes a mistake, then there is a certain decorum. To correct our child and it's not by scolding your child by uh, being angry at your child that you can make him or her realize his his or her mistake that's not going to happen today especially in the environment that we are living today so let me give you a few tips that might be helpful when it comes to the art of criticism the first thing is that when you'd like to criticize a child for some bad habit for something that you would like him or her to rectify start off by acknowledging some of the good points that he or she might possess. I mean, every child has some good things in, in him or her. So the first thing would be uh, to build that confidence. And when you build that confidence, what you do is uh, you talk to your child in a way that you first appreciate what he or she might have done positively in life. And this would, as I said, bring your, yourself closer to you, to, to your child. He or your child would think that, yes, my parent is my well-wisher because he's something which he's, he's, he's not just, and my parents are not just criticizing me. They're also appreciating me. So as mothers, as fathers, we must always appreciate profusely in, 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 I mean, really a lavish phrase that we should shower on our children because see what, what happens at times is that we do know that our children are, uh, are, are good in certain uh, areas, but we don't use our tongue enough to express that appreciation. We just do it in our minds. No, appreciation needs to be expressed. It's a huge confidence booster for anyone, for that matter, and for, especially for our children. So appreciate your child. And uh, the, the French philosopher Voltaire, if you must have heard of him, he said, uh, he exactly said the same, the same words. He said actually that, uh, Every criticism must begin with a praise for that person. And he's right about that because, you see, once you do that, you'll have the child by your side. This is the first tip regarding constructive criticism. The second is don't be repetitive. Don't do it again and again. It's going to lose its effect. Just do it a couple of maybe. I mean, choose the right time for it. Then let your child go through the suggestion or the critique that you presented and let him or her mold herself because you see it's not going to happen overnight we don't change overnight it takes time you first need to convey the in the right way that well look here you're doing this thing that you need to rectify and just stop there if you start repeating your criticism every now and then the child is not going to get enough time to think about that and the next time you do it he or she will get irritated He's going or she's going to be put off from what you're going to say to them the next time. So please, we must not be repetitive. We must not do it again and again. Just, I mean, just present your criticism in every once in a while because every mind needs time to think on that criticism. And then please choose wise and gentle words. So you see what we parents do when we criticize our, our children is that we are not very wise in the choice of words. We use, we use words which should never be used. So learn it. I mean, we have to learn this, that whenever we have something to say to our child, we have to say it in the most polite and the most soft of words. And these soft words must be coming from your heart, coming from your own concerned uh, emotion, because that they're really going to land in their hearts. 
as we say in Persian, Azdil uh, Khizad, Bardil Rizad, which they, they come from the heart and they go and etch themselves in the heart of the other person. So if you do this, your choice, your, the choice of uh, your words is wise, then you will realize that it's going to make that effect in them. And, and I, if you ask me um, that if there is a benchmark or who are the best parents, I would say best parents are those uh, to whom their children come immediately once they commit a mistake. I would say that these are the most successful parents because you see what has happened here is that they have given enough confidence to their children that even if you do a mistake, if you if you commit something extremely wrong and you come back, you don't you don't hide, you don't go to another person. You come straight to your mother or father and say, well, this is something that I did today and I'm not, I'm not very proud of it, but this is what I am. I am. This is what I am. I'm doing. So remember, every there is a learning curve for everyone. And this learning curve goes on in life. If your child makes a mistake, embrace him or her and don't leave him and don't abandon her. Let me give you an example. So my, one of my uh, one of the counseling sessions that I was once doing related to a Related to a, a woman, she had a child, he was 15 years old, and uh, he started this bad habit of drinking. So one fine morning when she spotted his her, her, her son that he, he had been drinking all night, so she scolded him in a, in a very bad way and said that, get out of my house, I would not like to see you again. Uh, you go and sleep with your nanny, your grandmother. She, she was living in, in an annexe uh, close to the house. And the next time you're doing this, you're not going to enter this house. So this is how she was telling me that I was so, uh, I mean, I was so put off. I was so angry at my child that I just told him to just go away and never come. I mean, when he's in this, in this situation, you should not even enter the house. And I told her that, look here, you have lost a chance to actually rectify your, the state of affairs. Because you see, if children get into this bad habit, the first thing that has uh, as parents, we need to, uh, to understand is you must come out of this state of denial. We don't accept that something has happened. So come out of that state of denial, still embrace your child, be friends with him or her. If something gravely wrong has been done by him or her, make him or her realize that you're still there for them as parents. You would still like to help them out. You would still like to be on their side, whatever they do, because you are their best well-wishers. So this is something that has to be done at all costs. Never abandon your child, whatever he or she may do, whether they are, this is done in, in, a, in a growing up age or in a later age or whenever, I mean, whatever part of life they are in, you have to be absolutely accommodating to them. Because you see, if you don't accommodate, then who else is going to accommodate? They're just going to run away. And I've seen broken families all over the world simply because uh, parents don't realize that if children are doing something wrong, which they don't like, uh, they don't understand that as parents, their job has already been done. Now they are mature adults. They have their own life to live. God has given this opportunity to them. God has tell, told them that they're as, I mean, as responsible individuals, you have the choice to make in life to do whatever you like. And no one can force you. Even your parents cannot force you. So I'm going to be, I'm going to bring this subject up a little while later as well. But for the moment, I was just talking to you that this art of criticism, is something that we must all learn. So parenting is an art, and within that art, this art of criticism is something that has to be learned because, as I said, criticism is something that is going to take place come what may because it comes to us naturally, and our children are going to make mistakes, and no one is ever free. So this is where uh, I would say that we have to understand. So, so far, I'm, I've tried to make three points. So the first one is that we must not, as parents, quarrel and complain and uh, be uh, in, a, in a situation that our child or children are witnessing our, our I mean something which is which must take place behind behind closed doors. The second thing that we have to realize is that uh, we must realize if our child is a slow learner, if he or she is not performing well, we must not taunt him. We must not, uh, I mean, uh, do things that are going to be even more worse. So we must find out the reason. So every child has a personality type. That personality type needs to be discovered. And as I said, that aptitude of your child is of paramount importance that you find out. If you do that, you'll realize that perhaps he or she belongs to a different category of people at times. And then thirdly, as I said, that uh, this art of criticism must be learned. And if you don't learn it, you'll, there's a chance that we might lose our children. So this is something also that we have to understand. 
Now let me come to the fourth point. So the fourth point that I'd like to express here is that uh, we must respect the privacy of our children. I mean, I'm talking about grown-up children. And for here, I, I'm, I'm sure you must be, you must be getting my point that checking the phones of our children, monitoring their internet, or finding out what what have they been watching on the internet or watching on their phones, this is not a good practice at all. I know as children, as parents, we are very concerned. I know that we have we have a lot of concerns since. In today's times, the social media has become so rampant and it's so easily accessible that uh, you can do anything you like with just one click. But then you see, this is something uh, we have to realize that when we start spying, when we start eavesdropping, I would say, uh, or monitoring our children in this way, it's not going to have a good effect on their confidence. So let me t tell this to you, and I say this with full consciousness and with full responsibility. That there is a time in the child in the time of every child's life. There is a time when when the age of adolescence, like for example, twelve years old, thirteen year olds, even uh, slightly earlier or maybe slightly uh, advancing in age. When this age comes, so children have to experiment with their lives, with their sexuality, uh, with a number of things that are taboo subjects. So let them do that. Let them have that experience because you see. Uh, you can help them. So sex education or sexuality is something which may be discussed in another session, but this is something that is that can be, I mean, really be helpful in teaching them some of the basics. But other than that, if uh, you have done the, the needful, then let them have their own life for some time. Because you see, this is, this is some, this, if you call this a deviation, yes, it's a deviation. This deviation happens in the life of every person. Did it not happen in our own lives? So look back. All of us have passed through this phase. Yes, the internet did not exist. Yes, we didn't have cell phones in our own times, maybe when we were growing up, but then there were other forms of distractions and temptations. So these temptations, these lures, they exist. So the best thing here is that you are aware of the moral upkeep of your child. So if you have been given, giving your child enough time when he or she was growing up, when you were a role model for them, when you were speaking the truth, when you were a, a person who was righteous, when you were connected to God, when you were reading the Quran in front of them, if all these things had been done and you were presenting an example before them, then your job has been done Or when, once they reach that adult age. Yes, what has happened is, or what generally happens is that as soon as our children start doing something wrong. It is at that time that we suddenly start to realize, well, what's what we, we, we've just lost them. I mean, they've now gone to a, another extreme. So we have to understand that now the time has been lost. The time was in those forming years when we would have been, we should have been there for them. We should have been in a position to teach them those values, teach them good morals, teach them what piety means, teach them what the pu purity of your heart is teach them how we have to restrain our eyes from taking undue liberty so all those things were meant to be taught at a certain age and that too in a very subtle way and if that has not been done then and now if you're uh, witnessing those deviations then the way out is not to put a clamp down on those things not it's not right that you, you just take away the phone or not give the phone or not uh, allow your child to use the internet no then let it happen and parallel to that, you, you need to do the same that you forgot to do earlier on. And just pray to God that they, uh, in, a, in a few years, they do return to uh, the right path. And at the same time, of course, not force them in any way, not uh, spy on them, not monitor them. I, I, I say this with full responsibility after trying to practice this as well and after trying to uh, see how good results it shows if it is done in, in the right manner. So the fourth thing that I would like to request to you is that please respect the privacy of your children. If they have, if they have done or they are doing something with, with, uh, with freedom as today is the case, then let them do that. In, 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 in parallel to that, as I said, you build their personalities, you come closer to them, you teach them good models. And as I said, the time actually for that was prior to this, this adult age. And if that was not taken up, then if they are doing something wrong, don't blame them, blame yourself. Because we, at the time that was needed, I mean, at that time, we were not there for them. So now if they're doing something, then instead of clamping down, instead of stopping them, there is another way out. And that is 
to let them do what they are like, what they, they, are, they are doing, and do your best in making, in developing that, that friendship that you might should have done earlier on, and at the same time, telling them that how purity and how that God connection is there, turn them towards the Quran, teach them how closer you can become to God and to the Quran and to a number of uh, good things in life uh, if you concentrate on these on these areas. So it is here that we, as I said, privacy is, uh, respect of the privacy is of essential importance. And you must have learned of that, uh, that catchphrase, uh, which we often use, uh, that is learn to let go. So you learn to let go of your children, of your adult children at a certain age. Now their personalities have been formed. Uh, you should have been, uh, I mean, doing something much before that. And if has, that has not been done or that has been done, the, the, then the final product is before you. Now your child is an independent human being. If you uh, interfere with his or her life in any way, that's not going to help. And not only it's not going to help, let me tell you as a responsible student of religion that it is something that you're not authorized to do. So God has given this opportunity to every adult to choose the lifestyle he or she would like to choose, to choose any lifestyle. I mean, it could be totally something different that you are used to. So allow that space, allow the, your child to develop in any field or to develop in something which you would not, not never like to even think of. Because you see now, God is there for you. And I would uh, state this, uh, that if we force our children to adopt our own worldview when, when, when they become adults, this is a grave violation of human rights. So as human rights, uh, I mean, the, the, the sense that we should get here is that once a child becomes an adult, he is now a human being, just as we are human beings. And just as we would not like anyone to force ourselves uh, to adopt a particular worldview, we should not do the same to our children. So this is of paramount importance that we have to understand that a child has his or her own life to live. So you have to learn to let go of your child. Le let him or her live the life that he or she wants to, because this is what God wants. So our role, I'm not saying that we just give up on our children. No, our, our role is still there. <clears throat> and our role is advisory at that, that time. We, are, we can suggest our children. And this brings me to the next point. And that is what I call religious uh, exploitation that we as parents sometimes do. So the next point that I'd like to uh, address here is that since we want our children to be obedient to ourselves, since we want them to follow what we have in, in mind, since we would like to tell them that, well, you, you, just, you must adopt a career that we would like you to uh, suggest to you or you, you should uh, adopt a particular spouse or a particular person that you that you would like if you if, you, if we don't like that person or that girl or that boy then you don't have the, the the authority to marry that person so what i'm saying here is that all major decisions of life uh, once they are to be made then the final person to make those decisions is actually your child your grown up child we islamically have been given all the uh, all the uh, leverage leverage to actually advise them to tell them that well this is what has happened uh, in our life this is what our experience is so uh, we are going to share our experience with you but you are free to choose whatever you would like to do so give them that <clears throat> freedom which god has given them and there are a couple of things uh, points of concern which uh, of course might have might be rising at this time in your mind when i'm saying these words is that doesn't the Quran talk about that you have to obey your parents? And uh, shouldn't the, the, the children be obeying their parents, whatever they say? <laughs> well, again, this might come as a surprise to you. There is not a single verse in the Quran. Not a single verse in the Quran. You'll find it. I mean, you just go and read the Quran again and again. Just Google it. There is not a single verse in the Quran which tells the children to obey parents. It's as simple as that. Everywhere in the Quran, wherever the parents have been brought up with relation to their children, the words are Wabil Walidaini Ihsan. You must treat your parents with kindness. You must treat them with affection. You must show them full respect. But nowhere in the whole corpus of the Quran will you find uh, the Quran telling you or God telling you or God telling the children that they have to follow what their, their parents uh, say. And the parents' advice is fine. 
There's just one, one verse in the Quran which ha, which is generally quoted in favor, favor of the fact that children must actually uh, do what their parents tell them to do. And that verse is in Surah Ibn Israel. Uh, and you must have heard of it when you were growing up. So the words are فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفِمْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا So the word uff, the word uff, uh, is generally translated as that parents should not, I mean, the, the children should not even say uff. And in Urdu, you know, uff means that you should not think of even disobeying your parents. So this verse is generally quoted. Uh, and you, 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 you say that فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفِمْ would mean that you just don't... Uh, disobey your parents in any way. This is how this verse is generally translated. Now, unfortunately, this is not a correct translation because you see, at times the, there is there are words which are common in both languages, but in different languages, they mean different. So uh, give, giving you an example, the word ghaliz, the word ghaliz, you've heard of this word, I'm sure. In Urdu, it means something which is filthy. But in Arabic, the word ghaliz means something which is strong, something which is firm. So the uh, marriage or the nikah contract has been called by the Quran as misakan ghaliza. It's, uh, I mean, how would you translate it as a filthy covenant or a filthy agreement? Of course not. So the word ghaliza in Arabic actually means something which is very strong, something which is very closely knit. So misakan ghaliza, when spoken for a nikah, would mean that it's a very strong bond between the two spouses. In a very similar way, the word uff in Urdu does mean that you should not even Think of disobeying your parents. But in Arabic, the word uff, remember we are studying Arabic. So the Quran is in Arabic. So when it says, uffin, it means do not show disrespect to your parents. The word uff in Arabic, you can look it up in any Arabic dictionary. It does not come for disobeying your parents or showing defiance to them. It comes whenever, I mean, it, use, it is used for any, any person is to show disrespect, to lose temper uh, against them. So this Quranic verse, فَلَا تَكُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفِمْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا is actually which is telling us that you should not scold your parents, not show disrespect to them. So I, I had to bring this verse up because this is the only verse which is used by parents or quoted uh, in favor of the parents that they should, uh, they, they have the, the authority to make their children uh, follow what they say. So as I said, this is not the case. So the whole of the Quran speaks of being kind to your parents uh, everywhere. So the bottom line or the, con the consequence of this is that all major decisions of life, including choice of the life partner, including the career that would, they would like to adopt, including any other major decision, it has to be the choice of the child, of the grown-up child. It is his or her prerogative. It could be absolutely wrong in our eyes as parents. It could be totally wrong. It could be... I mean, we could think that it's a disaster that it's going to take place. We could foresee that something, something very bad is going to happen if he, if my child is going to marry someone or my child is going to ha have this career. But believe me, this is what God wants us to do, that we must give that freedom to make mistakes as well. Because every person is now an individual once he's grown up. So if he has made this choice that as parents, we have to back our child. We have to facilitate them. We might differ with them. We can still express our difference of opinion. That's, that, that's not a problem. But what we need to understand here is that we must back our child. We must come for you. Like we are at your back. Of course, we would not agree with you, but then share our experience with you that this is something that would be really, uh, I mean, could adversely affect your life, but support you. So this is the uh, attitude that, that should be expected from good parents. And now that I come to the last point before I end my talk here. I think I've already, it's like 45 minutes or so. So the last point I am going to make here, and then inshallah we can have a discussion on these points on parenting, is that, is the, is the issue of teaching religion, how we should go about teaching religious directives to our children. So you see, we are, uh, we are generally raised in a way that we, when we would like to teach religion to our children, what we do is that we tell them, okay, Namaz padho, pray, roza rakho, Achha, halal khana khao, fala kaam na karo, fala kaam karo. You see, all the things that we have gotten used to is do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. So it's like something that we, it's like speaking in imperatives. You know, we're always ordering around. So, and uh, also there are certain misconceptions regarding religion as well uh, in this particular area that we need to once again revisit. For example, you see, the best way to make your child 
follow a particular religious directive, and again, when he or she is growing up, even when she has already grown up, the best way to go about making your child adopt a particular religious directive or not do something that, according to your own, own understanding, the Quran does not like us to do, is to is to teach the wisdom behind uh, the particular allowance or a particular forbiddance. So you see, instead of telling your child to pray, tell him, why should we pray? Or tell her, why should we pray? What is the wisdom behind praying? What is the philosophy behind praying? For example, uh, you can tell him or her that you see, we when we pray to the Almighty, we express our gratitude to him. In this world, when we come across people giving a lot of gifts to us, uh, doing favors to us, it is a natural response that we have that we immediately would like, uh, we would immediately like to repay that that person. Isn't that fact? I mean, isn't that so? If you get a birthday gift, if you get a wedding gift, if you get any sort of gift, then the, as soon as you get that gift, the next thought that comes to your mind is that, well, I'm going to repay this person with the gift that he has given me. Isn't that so? Yes, of course, some, something very natural. So all that you need to do is to tell your child that, look, the gifts that you have, look at your eyes, look at your ears, look at the good environment that you are in, look at the parents that you are, look at the surrounding, look at the cars and look at the gadgets, etc. These are all given to you by God. It's just that he's not in the picture. He's not handing these things to you. It is through the agency of certain other mediators that you're getting these things. So you need to understand that once you are able to tell your child that basically one of the basic reasons to pray is to acknowledge your, these gifts just as you would have acknowledged someone who you would have seen giving you these gifts. You would have immediately said thank you to him. But we cannot thank God enough because there's so much he has given us. So when we pray, when we bow before him, when we prostrate before him, when we put our forehead on the, on the ground, we are actually acknowledging his favors. And look at the feeling that you can make your child realize. I mean, so this is just one example. And if I go further, I can tell you that you can even make this prayer more enjoyable. If you want your child to pray, uh, you can make it more enjoyable for him by telling him that there is a part of the prayer. First of all, you can, I mean, start off by saying that, okay, start off with just offering one prayer. Let's say any any one prayer out of the five prayers, which you feel comfortable with, which is something which might be, uh, you're available mentally for that. It could be a Fajr prayer, it could be a Isha prayer or any. And just offer the first part. So first, start off with one prayer. Second, just offer the first part. And try to understand what you're saying in the prayer. And there are instances in, in the prayer, which I, of course, uh, in your q and I can, I can tell you, in which you can even do dua in your own language within the prayer. So within the prayer, there's a part in which if, you're, if you know Urdu or English or Persian or German or French, whatever, you can offer part of your prayer in your own language. The, that is a certain, there are certain uh, areas in the prayer which have been reserved for your own, own language as well. So, I mean, if you make your, the prayer enjoyable for your child, I, I can tell you that this is one of the most enjoyable experiences because you see, you are, you are in communion with God. You, you, you find yourself talking to God in the prayer. It's just a question of rightly guiding your child. And I, I would like to clear one misconception here. You must have heard of this hadith which says that uh, you, can, you can beat your child if he's not praying by the age of 12. Now, let me clarify this, that this is a, not an authentic hadith. It's not rightly ascribed to the prophet. So people often use this hadith to tell their children that at the age of seven, you can scold them. And at the age of 12, you can just beat them after they are not praying. So uh, scholars agree that this, although this, this hadith has become very commonly quoted, but it does not reliably trace back to the prophet. And I could not have imagined the prophet saying this, that you start beating your children for not praying. And how can, how would they ever pray if you start beating them up for, for not praying? So you see, every single Islamic directive, whether it's the, as I said, the fast, or whether it's the, the, the Hajj, or the Umrah, or the or eating halal food, or a number of other things, all of them have their rationale behind them. All of them have a certain wisdom behind them. And as parents, we must first find out the wisdom behind them. And, and before asking them to do these uh, certain things and abstaining from certain others, we need to actually convey this wisdom. And let me tell you that I mean, this this religion that we follow is so close to our heart. It is the it is such. I mean, it is so close to our nature that once you understand it properly, intellectually, you'll find as if you had you have lost you have gained a lost treasure because it's so close to your heart. So if you find the right reasoning, the right wisdom behind a certain directive, and you are able to convey it to your child, 
I can tell you, I can see it, that he or she is going to fall for it because it's so close to human nature. And today's children, they are absolutely forthright. Something which appeals to them is going to take place immediately. So find out that wisdom. So instead of criticizing your child, instead of scolding him or her for not praying or for not fasting or not observing certain things, you find out the wisdom behind that and then let him or her decide. Don't force your child to worship. It is the worst thing that can happen is that you can, if you start forcing your child to worship God, worship comes through a natural acknowledgement of God's gifts. And if you start imposing that worship on your child, it's, it's the worst thing that can happen. So I'm going to end here, uh, uh, my dear parents, and I, 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 I think there are uh, young adults here as well. And just let me go through, uh, and I, I hope I can recall the, all the points that I've made uh, so that we can just have a, uh, have a list of things that as parents we need to do. So the first thing, if I remember correctly, was that uh, all of us must be uh, very, very friendly as parents in front of our children, not quarrel with them in any way, uh, between ourselves in any way. And uh, we must also realize that uh, conflict resolution is something that we should find between ourselves as spouses and resolve our differences. I mean, when I say differences, I mean differences which, I mean, which would be grave if they are come before, if they are made to come before the children. Expressing a difference of opinion, I mean, if a wife has a difference of opinion or a husband has a difference of opinion, that's an absolutely fine. But to express it in a congenial way, express it in a friendly way and not quarrel and not point score and not demean the other party is something that has to be done. That's the first point. The second is that you have to understand that your child has a personality type and that personality type has to be discovered. And that discovery has to be made through various aptitude tests. And at that also accounts for the fact that you might, your child might not be performing well in a particular area, but if you're able to just discover his, his potential or her potential, you'll, you'll, you'll know where he's heading for. And in this regard, you must not taunt your child, you must not compare him. Yes, comparing him in the form of encouragement to other children is fine, but comparing him uh, in the form that you are criticizing him or demeaning him is absolutely not on. Then the third point I think which I made was that there's an art of criticism. There's an art. The criticism itself is an art. If you want to correct your child in a certain situation or in a certain wrong that he or she has done, then there are certain things that you must learn. The fourth point that I made, if I remember correctly, is that uh, as far as uh, uh, one's own personality is concerned, we have to understand that we must not impose uh, ourselves on our children in any way. We have to learn to let go. So we must not criticize them uh, in a way that uh, is that, that that corners them. So there is, uh, we, we must not spy on them in any way. We must not uh, uh, eavesdrop on them and let them have their own life. And of course, our own role is to be children, to be parents who are able to facilitate them in any way. Uh, and, and the best way would be that we are able to give them this, this, uh, this feeling that you should be seekers of the truth. Uh, and if you are able to impart this one lesson to your child, that be seekers of the truth, I think you've done your due. So don't spy on them. Don't uh, ever start watching over them. Let them have an independent life. Uh, the choice of their own partner, the choice of their own career is something that you must leave them to themselves. Leave these things to themselves. This is their choice. You must not make that choice for them. Yes, you can advise them. Yes, you can guide them. But it would not be appropriate that you take that decision. And the final thing that I just uh, spoke of is the fact that while teaching religion to them, you must realize that uh, it must not be taught in a way that you force religious directives on them. Learn yourself the wisdom behind these directives and then communicate that wisdom. Then impart that wisdom. And you'll find out for sure that your child is going to leap for that thing. Because if you... If you've discovered the right wisdom, if you conveyed it in a very well, in a very nice way, then remember it's the wisdom of God. And something which belongs to God is so close to our nature that we just cannot. I mean, it's like thirst. It's like water to the thirsty. You, it's like when you find that water, you immediately gulp it down your throat because it's so, so, so natural for you. So these are some of the things that as parents we have to realize and we must, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are things, of course, there are certain other minor things as well that I would have liked to discuss, but I think already we are close to an hour of this, of, uh, this uh, delivery. So I would uh, end my talk here and, uh, and I'm now open to your, all your questions.
sir thank you very much thank you i think uh, this is very helpful and uh, we have uh, uh, we have as we have requested many of us have got uh, including me our adult kids with us as well who are who will be very happy listening to this uh, lecture or session and uh, i'm sure they'll uh, become more uh, better friends with us and tell us that see uh, shahzad uncle told that this is what you are doing wrong now so uh, this is this is helpful uh, thank you i would uh, request everyone to please uh, whoever has a question raise their hands and if they can also turn on their camera and turn by turn we can move to these questions uh, assalam alaikum shada sir khalid junaid sabina from bahrain kya haal hai aapke ji wa alaikum assalam alhamdulillah ji bilkul theek zabardast baatein suni aap so good to see you good to see you after a long time and what a wonderful talk we heard this morning alhamdulillah as one question is that um, what if some parents have applied all the rules that you have just mentioned about seven eight rules but still the end product is not what you were expecting may i strictly say forward kahunga ke namaz nahi padta end of the day quran ki darsi aaya yani i am talking about a child who is grown up now about round about 30 years old ab is sab cheezon se guzarne ke baad bhi uh sari cheeze apply karne ke baad bhi ab usne jo choose kiya hai wo aisi cheez hai jo hum samajhte hain ki ye kya ho is what what is the what is the answer to that question so dekhe i think i tried to answer this in my uh, talk as well you see your job has been done by that time if your child has still not adopted the way that you would like him to have adopted then i mean you all that you can do is just pray to god unko unki zindagi pe chhod de or be good parents still facilitate them in wherever whatever they are doing lekin agar wo namaz nahi padhte ya koi aur kaam jo aap chahte hain wo nahi karte so now it is between him and his god let let that thing happen because ye khuda ka banaya hua kanoon hai ki nu ke apne bete पैदा होते हैं एंड ही डज नॉट एक्सेप्ट हिज फादर ऑन प्रीचिंग और वो अल्लाह के प्रॉफिट हैं तो इस वजह से अल्लाह ताला ने दुनिया में हर एक को एक तरह से नहीं बनाया हुआ तो इसके बजाय इस पे जरूर गौर करें कि अगर 30 साल का बच्चा नमाज नहीं पढ़ रहा तो कहीं इसमें मेरी गलती तो नहीं है सो इंस्टेड ऑफ ब्लेमिंग हिम और हर दैट समथिंग हैज नॉट हैपन द वे यू वुड लाइक टू मेक इट हैपन तो रिव्यू के भाई मेरा ख्याल है कि मैंने सारे स्टैंडर्ड अप्लाई कर लिए कहीं इसके बावजूद कोई और गलती तो नहीं हो रही अगर नहीं हो रही या हो रही है तो उसको तो आप देख लें लेकिन अदर देन दैट बस फिर आपको उसका मामला खुदा के हवाले करना चाहिए और दुआ भी करनी चाहिए और मौका ब मौका जब कभी आप नसीहत कर सकें या बात कर सकें या डिस्कशन कर सकें जरूर करनी चाहिए बिकॉज नाउ यू सी ही इज एन इंडिपेंडेंट पर्सन ही इज नाउ आंसरेबल टू गॉड इन ऑल रिस्पेक्ट आप आंसरेबल नहीं होंगे इफ यू डन योर जॉब नाउ ही इज डायरेक्टली आंसरेबल टू गॉड इस वजह से जैसे वो मैंने कहा था कि लर्न टू लेट गो दिस इज द टाइम टू लेट गो एक्सेप्ट हिज लाइफ और हर लाइफ की ठीक है वो ऐसा ही है लेकिन एज गुड पेरेंट्स स्टिल भी विद हिम आई मीन जिस तरह से कॉर्डल रिलेशन होते हैं सोशल ताल्लुक होते हैं उनको आप मेंटेन करें लेकिन ये सोच लें कि भाई ठीक है उस, उसने अपनी मर्जी से एक जिंदगी को चूज कर लिया है और उस पर उसको चलने दें लेकिन मैं जैसे मैंने कहा कि इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि आप बिल्कुल ही मायूस हो जाए नहीं जब क्योंकि देखें इस मौके इस तरह की जिंदगी में भी मौका आता है कि वेन यू आर एबल टू से कपल ऑफ वर्ड इन द राइट एट द राइट टाइम विच माइट हिट हिम Uh, and he could change so wait for that time wait for that moment but uh, thank, thank you, you very much kul jawab ko thank you very much i think we should give chance thank to you. others thank you sorry uh, i forgot i should have said this earlier uh, shahzad sahab in fact asked me for this session ke obviously he can speak english and urdu both very well ke uh, 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 mode of communication kya hona chahiye maine inko request kiya tha english isliye rakhe kyunki we we were expecting ke zyada families aur bacche zyada comfortable hote hain english mein but we can ek uh, urdu mein bhi baat kar sakte hain ek uh, 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 apologies i think fabia raised her hand so uh, fabia you can please unmute yourself and go ahead assalam gurantullah wa alaikum assalam ji 
the professor sahab uh, it's actually uh, my question is uh, regarding a present situation uh, we have been facing uh, uh, we you know we definitely teach our children in their growth period they do come across society uh, they meet uh, gradually meet different struggles such as a uh, struggle in the field of education uh, later on um, um, in the field of work so we do prepare them in that regard uh but uh in the meantime we do ignore that during they are you know gradually uh, growing they do come across the uh, content uh, sexual content on their mm-hmm. mobiles as well as they when they we have uh, heard a few of the incidents in this uh, in educational institutes as well mm-hmm. uh, where they meet up with the elder Uh, boys mm-hmm. or the girls mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Uh, uh, some of the principals have uh, made a request to uh, find out a solution uh, find out the ways how to teach them in this regard uh, i actually want you to guide us whether you know it's up to you whether you choose this particular meeting in this uh, to guide us about it or you mm-hmm. uh, arrange some other lecture for this Uh, particular topic uh, so that we may have an idea how we are going to interact in this regard and uh, you know uh, inculcate our kids in the institute about it in the form of a short lecture you may say as well as in our families yes i have uh, decided to teach uh, kids uh, in, in our families as well so i want i have the material i have the, uh, heard of a lot of lectures i have the mm-hmm. material but i don't know how to give it a start mm-hmm. how to just come across a mm-hmm. kid a group of children and just start speaking when i come across mm-hmm. elders i can easily speak but i don't know how to start so guide us whether you want in this lecture or some other Ji, I think uh, this is a topic in itself, and it's a it's a very comprehensive topic, and it's something that is uh, not touched upon. I mean, we seldom discuss it; uh, we just pass by it, and it's like, a, as I said, it's like a taboo subject. So, I think we can arrange a separate discussion on this because this needs a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of things that have to be discussed, and how you can help your child uh, when he or she is growing up in this age. and how you can really be uh, of uh, help to the child as well as the fact that where you have to restrain yourself and where you have to allow your child to do certain thing which every person does so i think uh, anzar agar aapke paas we you think that is uh, i mean some some other weekend that we can take out and so we will have a we can have a special uh, discussion uh, for parents regarding sex education uh, and how you can really go about this uh, about this field uh, regarding your children sure sir uh, this is uh, a topic that you have addressed in your book as well and uh, this is a comprehensive topic so i think uh, uh, or or uh, uh, as i said uh, in today's session uh, um, mashallah we have uh, got a lot of attendees as well there are families and there are kids as well so <coughs> maybe is topic ko hum separately bhi le sakte hain and i'll arrange that uh, the next one uh, i have uh, rehan bhai you want to go ahead please हेलो सलाम शराज सलीम साहब थैंक यू सो मच फॉर फॉर वेरी लाइटनिंग टॉक मेरा बस क्वेश्चन ये था आई अंडरस्टैंड कि किसी भी रिलेशनशिप में और जैसे बाकी रिलेशनशिप्स होती हैं वैसे ही पेरेंट्स और बच्चों की रिलेशनशिप होती है उसमें ट्रस्ट एक बहुत बड़ा एलिमेंट है और ट्रस्ट ही बिल्ड करना होता है टू एक्चुअली इनकलकेट बच्चों में वैल्यूज जो हम चाह रहे हैं जो वैल्यूज जो हमारे वैल्यूज हैं और उसमें जाहिर सी बात अगर आप स्पाइंग कर रहे हैं बच्चे पे और बच्चे को ये एहसास है कि उसके वाले उस स्पाई कर रहे हैं तो वो ट्रस्ट लेवल है वो ब्रेक होता है लेकिन आप समटाइम्स जब बच्चे ग्रो हो रहे होते हैं आप उनमें एक बिहेवियरल चेंज देख रहे होते हैं एंड यू आर क्यूरियस अबाउट देयर एक्टिविटीज इन देंस के वॉट एग्जैक्टली दे आर डूइंग हु आर देयर फ्रेंड्स एंड जो टीन एजर बच्चे खासतौर से बच्चियों की जो नेचर होती है उसमें ये होता है कि दे आर नॉट वेरी फोर्थ कमिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ वॉट इज है इन देर लाइफ Uh, mm-hmm. they are a bit like you 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 seem you know, it it mm-hmm. uh, it appears as if they are being secretive about uh, what is happening in their life and then you become curious and mm-hmm. then uh, 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 the a part of you as a parent then tend to uh, uh, look at other sources where you can find some information as to what is going in their life and sometimes you you try to see their phone or uh, you talk to mm-hmm. their friends right. parents and this is a natural uh, basically a progression as a parent who is who is worried about uh, their child's mm. teenage behavior mm. so 
अब आपने तो नेशनली फ्रॉम योर टॉक आई अंडरस्टैंड के व्हाट व्हाट यू आर सजेस्टिंग बट प्रैक्टिकली स्पीकिंग यानी दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच इज टोटली आउट ऑफ बाउंड्स एज अ गुड पेरेंटिंग और यू यू थिंक देयर कुड बी सम अदर वे ऑफ ऑफ मैनेजिंग दिस नहीं आई थिंक देयर आर अ नंबर ऑफ थिंग्स दैट हैव दैट कैन बी अडॉप्टेड जैसे मैं कह रहा हूं कि पेरेंटिंग इज अ स्किल तो उसमें वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट वी हैव टू लर्न व्हिच आई जस्ट रेफर टू ब्रीफली लेकिन आई कैन इलैबोरेट नाउ Uh, that is that you have to discover the personality type of your child wo so, matlab ye hota hai ki you see there are children who are introverts there are children who are naughty there are children who are extroverts there are children who are reactionary there are children who are very angry there are children who uh, just remain in their shell the first thing is that not every child has to be dealt i mean in the same way because ye jis tarah insaan hote hain uh, there are a varieties i mean a large variety of uh, of personality types so similarly when a child is growing up एवरी चाइल्ड आई मीन सिबलिंग्स के अंदर कितना फर्क होता है एक बहन दूसरे भाई से एक भी बहन दूसरी बहन से टेम्परमेंटली बहुत फर्क होती है तो यू हैव टू फर्स्ट गेज के वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज द पर्सनैलिटी टाइप ऑफ दैट पर्सन ऑफ दैट चाइल्ड सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दैट पर्सनैलिटी टाइप यस आई मीन यू कैन स्टिल मॉनिटर योर चाइल्ड वट आई एम सेंग इज ऐसी मॉनिटरिंग विच इज गोइंग टू डिस्टर्ब दैम विच इज गोइंग टू मैं होता ना कि लूज दैट ट्रस्ट इन यू that is that has to be avoided the best monitoring for example main aapko batata hu kuch there are direct uh, types of monitoring there are certain indirect types of monitoring direct monitoring the sabse acha ye hota hai ki you are able to discover your personality type of the child and you are friends with that child to aapki jab communication shuru ho jati hai na apne bachchon ke sath agar aapne sahi unki uh, uh, samajh liya ki unki shakhsiyat kaisi hai to phir wo bachcha is not going to i mean back out from your फ्रॉम दैट कम्युनिकेशन वो फिर खुद आपको बहुत सारी बातें बताएंगे सिर्फ वो आपको टाइप डिस्कवर करनी है और पेशेंस शो करनी है और गलती में जो टोकना और ना टोकने का जो जो सटल तरीका होता है वो आपको जानना है फिर आप देखिए कि बच्चों को जो बच्चों के फ्रेंड्स हैं उनको घर पे इनवाइट करके जिसमें आप मतलब बर्थडे पार्टीज होती हैं या वैसे होता है कि दूसरे बच्चे आते हैं दूसरों के पेरेंट्स आते हैं तो पेरेंट्स के साथ पेरेंट्स की दोस्ती होती है दूसरे बच्चे जब आपके घर आते हैं तो उनसे आपका एक्सपोजर होता है दूसरे बच्चे बहुत सारी इनडायरेक्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन दे रहे होते हैं तो ये जो सोशल एक्सपोजर है ये इट ऑल्सो हेल्प्स फिर बच्चों की पेरेंट टीचर मीटिंग्स होती हैं उन पे मैं तो हमेशा हर पेरेंट को एडवाइस करता हूं कि बोथ पेरेंट्स मस्ट गो टू दीज पेरेंट टीचर मीटिंग्स क्योंकि आपके जो टीचर का फीडबैक आपको मिल रहा होता है वो बहुत सारा डायरेक्ट होता है वो आपको बताएगा कि आपका बेटा जो है बेटी के अंदर ये ये चीजें हो रही हैं तो ये दो दो तीन चीजें ऐसी होती हैं कि जिसके नतीजे में वो जो फोन की चेकिंग है या कंप्यूटर की चेकिंग है उसकी जरूरत वो फिर वो एक अलग मसला है यानी लेकिन वो फिर आपको फिर भी नहीं करनी चाहिए वो जो फीडबैक आपके एनवायरनमेंट से आपको टीचर से आपके जो दूसरे बच्चों के पेरेंट्स से और बच्चे के साथ डायरेक्ट रबते से आपको मिल सकता है उसको आपने स्ट्रांग करना है और बच्चे को वो आजादी देनी है कि अगर आपने उनको वैल्यू सही सिखा दी है उनको उनकी तरबियत सही कर दी है उनको बताया है कि अखलाकियात और प्योरिटी और एक अच्छा इंसान क्या है और आला सलाहियतें जो इंसान की हैं हर इंसान को अगर आप तोज्जो दिलाएं कि वो देखिए कि देर आर सर्टन थिंग्स दैट यू कैन अचीव इन लाइफ बाय बाय डूइंग दोज थिंग्स तो आप देखेंगे कि जब इंसान के अंदर आप उसको डाइवर्ट करते हैं ना अपने बच्चे को किसी क्रिएटिव चीज की तरफ तो वो जो गलत चीजें होती हैं वो तो हर आदमी की जिंदगी में हर वक्त रहती हैं लेकिन दे जस्ट गेट टोन डाउन ठीक है एडोलसेंस में जरा ज्यादा होंगी लेकिन उन्होंने अपनी जगह में वापस आना है तो मैं आपको थोड़ी सी मिसाल देता हूँ जैप जापान की ना जापानीज जो करते हैं एट दिस स्टेज व्हाट दे डू इज दैट दे इंट्रोड्यूस देयर चिल्ड्रन टू क्रिएटिव थिंग्स एट अ वेरी यंग एज जैसे हो ना हाथ से मॉडल बनाना या एट अ वेरी यंग एज जिक सॉ पजल्स के जरिए से बच्चे को एंगेज रखना यूं समझ लें कि बच्चे की जो एनर्जी है एज ही शी इज ग्रोइंग अप उसको उसके लिहाज से कोई एक्टिविटी मिले कि जो उसको इन्वॉल्व रखे और जैसे ही बच्चे के अंदर शोर पैदा हो दे गिव दे क्रिएटिव प्रोजेक्ट्स जिसमें आपकी जो सेंस ऑफ क्रिएटिविटी है वो इट स्टार्ट्स टू ब्लॉसम एंड दी सेटिस्फैक्शन विच क्रिएटिविटी गिव्स टू यू इज समथिंग विच इज अनमैच तो जैसे ही क्रिएटिविटी का आप रोल पैदा करते हैं ना अपने बच्चों के अंदर तो वट हैपन्स इज दैट ये जो दूसरी साइड ट्रैक दूसरी एक्टिविटीज होती है दे गेट साइड ट्रैक दे आर बाउंड टू 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 बी लेसर देन दे आर बिफोर तो ये जो हायर ऑब्जेक्टिव इन लाइफ है टू डू थिंग्स विच कैन रियली मेक अ डिफरेंस वो उस क्रिएटिविटी से पैदा होता है तो क्रिएटिविटी इज नॉट जस्ट थ्रू आर्ट इज थ्रू अ लॉट ऑफ अदर थिंग्स मोटर न्यूरॉन स्किल्स होती हैं जो सिखाई जाती हैं ये इसके मॉडल्स हैं जो बाकायदा दुनिया में पैदा हुए हुए हैं तो इस तरीके से आप वो बच्चों को एक तरफ प्रमोट कर रहे हैं टू डू सर्टन थिंग्स इन लाइफ विच कैन रियली इन्वॉल्व दैम एंड ऑन दी अदर हैंड आप थ्रू डायरेक्ट कॉन्वर्सेशन 
through their children, through these parent-teacher meetings, through other exposure, through other social events. You take them out for dinner, maybe for a vacation. So a lot of things at times jo aapko don't you get not get to know in your houses because of the fact that there's always a certain routine that they follow. But when they, you do these things out of a routine, you go to a different place for a couple of days. So the personality of your child also is exposed to you. So I'm just talking about certain general things. Like in specifics, we may have to give you if I have more data regarding the child. So in short, what I'm saying is that these indirect ways are inco.pj. And the best way to do this is that direct communication in a very friendly way in which the child knows that if it's wrong with me, then my father or father will help me out instead of scolding me. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Naina, ask him, uh, please uh, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. It was a wonderful session, I must say, being a parent. Uh, my wife was still busy, so I got an opportunity to listen to this uh, session on her mobile. So, okay. I have two things. One, you have to record this session. How can I get this session recording? So, did you recording with you? Please go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my question is that uh, in our lives, uh, when we have as a kids, we have to go to our lives. So most of the time, we have to come and discuss what we have done in school. We have to say this, 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 we have to say this. But nowadays, social media ki jo involvement hai in kids' life, it's too much, too much that uh, we complain. And most of the time, my wife complains that the kids don't discuss anything. We discuss a lot of things with our parents. So if there is a tip, what can we do as parents? 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 बट एटलीस्ट उनको भी ये रियलाइजेशन होनी चाहिए कि पेरेंट्स कभी कभार क्यों ऐसे हो जाते हैं और वो क्यों ऐसे करते हैं सो दे आल्सो विन विन सिचुएशन हो फॉर बोथ पेरेंट्स एंड किड्स आल्सो सो जैसे कहते हैं ताली दोनों हाथों से बचती है तो पेरेंट्स जितना भी अपना काम कर लेंगे जब तक किड्स को भी थोड़ी रियलाइजेशन नहीं होगी शायद वो आपकी बात जैसे हमें बहुत अच्छी तरह समझ आई क्वाइट पॉसिबल के किड्स को भी उतनी अच्छे तरीके से आपकी जो है वो लेकिन जो आपने सवाल किया देखिए वो वो सवाल आपका बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है कि आजकल के जो बच्चे और जो पेरेंट्स के दरमियान जो डिस्कनेक्ट है वो बच्चा आएगा अपनी जिंदगी में लग जाएगा बस मुश्किल से खाना भी शायद नहीं खाएगा वो भी फूड जो है होम डिलीवर करा लेगा तो उसकी अटेंशन कैसे कैच करनी है देखिए ना द फर्स्ट थिंग जैसे आपने कहा कि माँ या बेटी के दरमियान या बाप और बेटे के दरमियान या किसी तरह से दे आर एबल टू सेट ऑन द टेबल टूगेदर चले एक देख खाना इकट्ठा खा लिया या कोई मीनिंगफुल डिस्कशन होगी तो देखें इसकी जो सबसे बड़ी आप समझ लें सबसे बुनियादी चीज ये है कि बच्चों के कुछ इंटरेस्ट हैं वो या म्यूजिक में होगा या कोई स्पोर्ट्स में होगा या कोई फैशन में होगा या कोई कोई चीज होगी जो आपका कि बेटी या बेटे के अंदर यानी वो स्ट्रीक आई हुई है उसके बारे में एज पेरेंट्स आप ये जान लें कि भाई उसके उसके बड़े लोग कौन हैं उसके हीरोज कौन हैं उसकी जो जिस जिस फील्ड में उसका इंटरेस्ट है उसके बारे में जो इंफॉर्मेशन है तो आप जब अपने बच्चों से असल में होता ये है कि हम फ्रेंडली जिसको कहते हैं ना कि हम फ्रेंडशिप डेवलप करेंगे वो फ्रेंडशिप होती है हमारी अपनी जिंदगी के लिहाज से नहीं फ्रेंडशिप का ये मतलब नहीं है कि आप उनसे गपशप के तरीके पर उनसे अच्छे मूड में आ जाए फ्रेंडशिप का असल मतलब ये है कि उनके जो इंटरेस्ट हैं जो उनकी हॉबीज हैं जो उनके हीरोज हैं जो उनकी जो जिंदगी जिस पे वो सुन रहे हैं हर वक्त रिवॉल्व राउंड करती है उनके बारे में यू आर इन पोजीशन टू हैव अ गपशप डिस्कशन विद देम कि आप आपको पता हो कि भाई जो बच्चा जो है वो जिस आजकल सॉन्ग सुन रहा है जो नया एल्बम रिलीज हुआ है वो कौन सा है या जो इस वक्त जो लेटेस्ट नेटफ्लिक्स पे सीरीज चल रही है वो कौन सी है ताकि वो आप यू आर एबल टू कन्वर्स विद योर चाइल्ड रिगार्डिंग वॉट ही और शी इज डूइंग आपने अपने लिहाज से नहीं उसको तय करना 
कि आए आए दोस्ती करें आए हम बाहर चलते हैं आए चाय पीते हैं वो तो बोर हो जाएगा उसके लिए चाय पीना या वो जो हमारे लिए थिंग्स ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट थी दे आर नो लॉन्गर देयर सो यू नीड टू गेट डाउन टू देयर लेवल कि वो इस वक्त क्या इस चीज में इन्वॉल्व और हर बच्चे का अलग होता है एवरी सिंगल चाइल्ड इज इज गोइंग हैज एन इंस्टा पेज ही और शी इज गोइंग टू हैव अ कोई ना कोई सीरीज वो देख रही होगी कोई सीजन देख रहा होगा या देख रही होगी किसी न किसी की या कोई उसने मूवी देखी होगी तो उनके बारे में उनकी चीजों की जो मालूम और फिर गपशप के अंदाज में उसमें एक्सचेंज करना ये है स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट और इसमें यह ना समझें कि आप इसमें हो जाता है बहुत सारी आपको चीजें ऐसी करनी पड़ेंगे जो आपको पसंद नहीं है लेकिन स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट असल में यही है उसके बाद जैसे जैसे ये कम्युनिकेशन गैप कम होगा तो बहुत सारी वो बातें जो आप चाहते हैं करना वो उनका उनका मौका बाद में आएगा उसका इंतजार कर लें अभी तो आपको शुरू यहां से करना है कि आपका बच्चा क्या कर रहा है इस वक्त जो हर बच्चे का अलग अलग होता है उसके लेवल पे आके उसकी जो गपशप में आपके पास दस मिनट हो आपके पास इतनी इंफॉर्मेशन हो जो आपने इंटरनेट से पढ़ ली हो कि हाँ मेरे पास इतनी बात है कि मैं अपने बच्चों से कर सकता हूँ और इतनी चीजें मैंने देख ली है कि मैं बच्चों से शेयर कर सकता हूँ ये है करने का काम जैसे ही आप ये करेंगे आप यूं देखेंगे कि आपकी जो बेटी और बेटा है वो जितनी देर तक आप उनके इंटरेस्ट की बातें करेंगे वो फौरन आपसे बात करेंगे लेकिन जैसे ही आपने जनरल बात शुरू कर दी ये दे आर नॉट दे आर नॉट लॉन्गर इंटरेस्टेड कि पाकिस्तान पॉलिटिक्स में क्या हो रहा है या दुनिया में क्या हो रहा है या फला चीज में क्या है दे हैव देर ओन लाइफ तो उस लाइफ में आपको घुसना है असल में सर थैंक यू थैंक यू बिफोर मूविंग ऑन क्योंकि मेरी पूरी फैमिली इसी फोन पे है तो माय डॉटर रामीन वांटेड टू आस्क क्वेश्चन एंड हम बच्चों से क्वेश्चंस एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे थे तो मैंने कहा कि लेट हर आस्क देन आई मूव फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट पर्सन इन लाइन व्हिच इज बिलाल थैंक यू रामीन प्लीज गो अहेड हेलो हेलो बेटा हाउ आर यू माय क्वेश्चन वाज व्हाट एज डू यू एडवाइस पेरेंट्स टू गिव चिल्ड्रन एक्सेस टू देयर ओन फोन Oh uh, if you ask me i think this this is i mean this is different for different countries maybe or different uh, environments but i think as soon as uh, maybe they they the cross 10 years or so uh, in which it's essential for you to communicate uh, with your parents so that they know your whereabouts or you can tell them to fetch you from school or maybe you're having some uh, you you need to have some information that you give would like to i'd say i'd say this this is no particular age but as soon as possible i would say and i i would say that i mean as, as soon as maybe a child is in 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 uh, crosses 10 years of age maybe or around about that time i mean it could be just slightly less even or slightly more but uh, it, it's now become a necessity so i think instead of uh, actually gauging it through an through an age sort of a benchmark it's more of a necessity which a parent has to realize and it should be as soon as possible sir देखें बच्चे कितने इंटेलिजेंट हो गए हैं मौके पे चौका मारते हैं तो <laughs> माशाल्लाह नो बिकॉज़ ऑल पेरेंट्स आर ऑलवेज लाइक व्हेन यू टर्न 18 यू विल गेट अ फोन व्हेन यू गेट योर ओन जॉब यू आर गोना बाय योरसेल्फ अ फोन एंड स्टफ सो आई आई डोंट एग्री विद दोस पेरेंट्स आई थिंक दैट पेरेंट्स नीड टू रियलाइज दिस नॉट जस्ट अ प्लेइंग गैजेट एनीमोर इट्स मोर ऑफ अ नेसेसिटी इट्स लाइक अ कम्युनिकेटिव डिवाइस आल्सो यस इट हैज अदर बेनिफिट्स एज़ वेल एंड अदर a uh, problem as well but at the same time it's something that is now become a necessity <clears throat> done thank you bilal you can uh, please go ahead ask your question acha just for rami and beta rami if your dad is not giving your chachi will give so don't worry about that <laughs> <laughs> on your next birthday sangu shahzad sahab my just question is obviously to lighten the mood and try to understand you know aapne jo baat batayi thi ke you know uh, at certain age or Uh, invest to get through this uh, personality test and aptitude test and and having said that you know my my wife she's from uk so you know obviously she went through this kind of personality test and all that mm-hmm. her personality test and aptitude uh, they give you two or three options hers was mm-hmm. like a, a prisoner officer or a police officer or mm-hmm. other thanks to my nan you know my my mother in law if it wasn't for her to push her into the right direction to mujhe milne ke liye jail jana padta please abhi tak ya ya you know uh, uh, warden uh, as prisoner warden so my question is basically ke should we you know refrain from labeling our kids because i feel if we label them ke acha hame ab aapke personally pata chal gaya hai ab aap yahi ho they will not achieve right. their full potential so should mm. not refrain and the reason i'm actually asking is you know in, in leadership roles and you know in, in mnc uh, they mm. teach you that they stop you from conducting this 
uh, aptitude or uh, right. ability because hmm. that will restrict a potential of the person who could do much more जी, so mera question should we not refrain from labeling our child ki bhai tum technician hi banoge hmm. tum ye banoge aur ab tum aage nahi ja sakte nahi this is a very very good question lekin main aapko ye bataun ki see the aptitude tests which are done at an earlier age they never give you a single aptitude wo aapko ek general direction dete hain ki bhai ye do teen cheeze hain in which you can excel you see <coughs> you aptitude test say they they ha, they are of different sorts for different ages when you do an aptitude test for an 18 year old or 17 year old wo wo hoga aisa ki jisme aapko options bahut narrow down milengi when you do it for a 7 year old or an 8 year old or 9 year old wo wo hoga ki kyunki uski personality bhi develop kar rahi hai wo samne abhi tak nahi aayi hai lekin ek kuch basic char panch cheeze wo aapke samne aa jayengi usse jisse as a parent aapko madad milegi ki bhai acha narrow down hone mein to abhi time lagega lekin ye teen char options aa gayi hain samne तो इस वजह से देखें इट ऑल डिपेंड्स ऑन द टेस्ट दैट यू आर टेकिंग दिस नॉट वन जस्ट नॉट वन टेस्ट जिसके नतीजे में यू जस्ट गोइंग टू डाउन योर पर्सनालिटी ऑफ योर चाइल्ड नहीं एज ए सेड ये लाइक जिसमें पेरामेंट होता है ऐसे करके ऊपर जाता है तो ये इस तरह के होते हैं टेस्ट कि अर्लियर एज पे दे आर मोर जनरल एंड एज द पर्सन डेवलप दे आर मोर स्पेसिफिक लेकिन एट द सेम टाइम आपको बताऊं क्योंकि इंसान के बनाए हुए है ना इन पर गलती का इम्कान तो हमेशा रहेगा मैं दे आर नॉट हंड्रेड तो आपको कॉमन सेंस भी यूज करनी है और ये यहां पे पेरेंट्स का भी रोल आता है कि टेस्ट जो है जैसे आपने कहा कि आपकी बेगम का उन्होंने प्रिजन ऑफिसर का बताया और उनकी अपनी अम्मी ने उनको टोका तो देखिए बास टेस्ट के अंदर डेफिशिएंसी होती है और बाद दफा टेस्ट को आपने जरा ज्यादा वाइडली लेना होता है सैंपल जरा बड़ा करना पड़ता है तो इस वजह से हर चीज की एक डाउन होती है ये खुदा का तो बनाया हुआ नहीं इंसानों का बनाया हुआ है तो उसकी जो नेगेटिव है वो तो है लेकिन मैं जैसे कह रहा हूं कि उसको अगर आप सही तरह से यूटिलाइज करेंगे तो इट हैज अ वेरी गुड पॉजिटिव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन or uh, it's just a question of using your common sense as well when you are giving these tests thank you very much thank you bilal uh, ghazal uh, you have a question or you ji i have couple of questions from the chat so dr shahzad we got few questions in the chat so the first one asked that uh, what do you suggest for a parent who is working and can't give full time to kids um and they have so many other responsibilities being mm. a wife being a parent house parents family etc and the other thing they want to mention is that they have suggested or provided means for learning online um so what do you suggest um how they should address this issue dekhiye this is something very specific and uh, i would need more data for, for a particular parent ke what the type of job that she might be doing the nature of uh, the house setup what exactly is the husband's involvement uh, do they have any extended family can they afford a maid can uh, they put their child on certain gadgets so you see uh, tips they all depend on the situation which the person uh, which a particular parent might be passing through uh i know this is a very pressing sort of a thing kyunki every now many women are now professionals they are working and uh, especially at a young age uh, once they're through with the maternity period and uh, the first couple of years to zahir hai ke day cares wagaira ki jagah hoti hain but they are not sufficient so i think that the jo concerned parent hain if they could be if they could get in touch with me personally uh, with some specific data then i can be more helpful uh, otherwise as i said ki ye ek it's a constant battle that all of Uh, all of us parents have to go through we have to manage ourselves and we have to make this uh, this thing uh, really work for us ke hamari jo first priority hai that is our child the investment that we do the biggest investment that we can do is investing time uh, and our personal time and effort for the child to uske liye kisi na kisi tarah se time nikalna kuch kisi na kisi tarah se apni jo entertainment hai usko curtail karke thoda sa karna lekin main i can only talk in principle as i said ke to give that preference to the child other than that as i said if there are specifics then i would need to uh, know those specifics to give a, a specific advice so the other question i got is that how we can improve 17 18 or years old daughter in their ikhlaq and is the um, fitra is different than tarbiya i think the best way to uh, do forth is ke somehow make them connected to the quran i mean somehow or the other when i say Uh, get them connected to the Quran. Is you see, you, I mean, you must make this effort to get your child in touch with God as soon as possible. And 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 how many? How we are mediators. We are, I mean, in betweens. So the less we are, the better. That direct connection with God is the best thing that can happen to any any child or any grown up. And that can be done in a way that you are able to introduce the book of God to them first of all. Don't give the whole book to them because this is a, a big book. 
So it's like giving them certain selections from the Quran. We have published a book which is called Selections from the Quran precisely for this reason, so that you're able to, uh, I mean, just give it to your child, even if he's or she's not able to read the Arabic, he or she can just read the English part or the Urdu part and just go through their translation. The selections that we have made are basically, uh, they are verses which relate to one's moral upkeep, one's conduct, one's character, uh, and one, one's uh, spiritual uh, advancement. So uh, just giving them this this uh, this clue that they can put this book on their bedside and just go through it. So I think the best way would be to just get them connected to, to the Quran as far as possible. And uh, the other thing that you might uh, like to do with them is to, I mean, there are there are areas in which you can spend quality time with your children in a way that you can. Uh, at times arrange for them certain uh, workshops or certain activities uh, which are going to be very helpful in making them discover God. So discovering God, connecting them to God, we conduct those workshops at times uh, simply uh, in, in a way so that uh, a grown-up child is because you see, every person has a spiritual gap in his or her own self. We have a physical existence and we have a spiritual existence. So every single person has a thirst for spirituality. So if that thirst for spirituality is addressed in the right way uh, by the right uh, in the right environment and by the right persons uh, it's, got, it's bound to have its effect because if not giving the child the quran or anything which is spiritual then that spiritual part which exists there's a vacuum there it's going to be filled with some other information with some other thing so it's best to to gauge that particular vacuum uh, as much as you can and then as i said uh, make your child connected to god but again, there are specifics uh, that how we exactly can do that, because today we were talking more in general terms. So again, this is a specific topic that how you can affect your children in their moral upkeep, uh, influence them in becoming better people, in better human beings, uh, becoming better human beings. So that again would be some, as I said, uh, uh, an independent topic that we can inshallah take up some time. The other one I got is that um, our participant is saying that she is trying to be friendly with her child. And she never scolds them, but what whenever they are making mistakes. But she has a feeling that she's losing respect as a parent. How do you address or how do you comment on that? So as I said, you have to be retrospective. You have to be introspective, in, in fact. And start, I mean, by evaluating, is there something that you're do doing which is uh, infringing on their privacy? Are you forcing down something on them? Are you, are you doing something which is annoying to them? So you see, uh, as I said, friend friendship is not something that you just have a sweet tone. That's not sufficient. You see, you have to get down to their interests. You have to get down to what they like and speak to them uh, in their in their field of interest. And as I said, build that relationship of trust and confidence. So uh, again, as I said, uh, this, this is more of a general, general advice that I can give. But for specific uh, counseling, I have separate sessions uh, going on. So I give separate counseling sessions to teenagers, to parents, in which I can be more uh, pinpointed in my advice because you get to know more about the child and the parent when once you talk to them directly. But as I said, in general, what we need to do is to build that relationship of trust and friendship. And as I said, friendship means to get down to their level, to talk to them regarding their own interests. Uh, Ruheen, please go ahead. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Sir, how to teach them to be safe while they are away from home? Like uh, now they are just 16, 17, 18, and they want to uh, go to hostel and study, and they want to go to abroad. But parents always will be concerned about, about their safety. When they are at home, we will be watching them. When they are going to school and coming, we know that they are safe. But when mm -hmm. uh, they are still or at the very young age, they want to go to studies to uh, abroad. So, right. and uh, we are not into that. But still, so, uh, they want to go and study in abroad. So, how mm -hmm. to how to make them understand about the, their safety because unko jo duniya malum hai wo bahut choti hai sirf ghar pata hai ek chhota sa gaon ka ek but when they go to ab oh. abroad how do they face the big world to ye kafi worry karta hai ji ji aapka question clear ho oh. gaya ये आपका क्वेश्चन क्लियर हो गया तो मैं आपको थोड़ा एक मशवरा दूं जो शायद हो सकता है आपको पसंद ना आए लेकिन ये मैं बहुत सोच समझ के आपको मशवरा दे रहा हूं कि आप उनको गलती करने दें उनकी जो उनके बारे में परेशान ना हो 
उनकी उनके बारे में खुदा से आप जरूर दुआ करें लेकिन ये जो सेफ्टी का एलिमेंट है या ये बात कि उनको आजकल हर बच्चा बाहर जाना चाहता है इसके बारे में उनका जो अपना जो जिंदगी के बारे में कॉन्सेप्ट अगर ये है और अपॉर्चुनिटी को कहीं बाहर जाने की मिल गई है तो वाई नॉट मतलब जाने दें उसकी वजह यह है कि आजकल का जो बच्चा है ही और शी फील्स मोर कंफर्टेबल कि उनको चैलेंजिंग एनवायरनमेंट मिले अपनी स्टडीज में दे डोंट फाइंड द सेम स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज और एजुकेशन इन देर ओन कंट्री तो ये हर एक का हक है कि वो बाहर जाए तो एज ए सेट कि आप उनको जरूरी बातें बता के अल्लाह के सपोर्ट करके उनको जाने दें और अपने आप को मजबूत करें कि देखिए हमने तो अपने बच्चे के लिए बेस्ट जो हम कर सकते हैं वो करना है उसके बाद थोड़ी बहुत गलतियां भी होंगी थोड़े बहुत मसाइल भी पैदा होंगे उनको हमने डील करना है तो बच्चे को प्रोटेक्ट करके अगर आप रखेंगे बिल्कुल या कुछ नहीं करने देंगे तो ये ज्यादा खतरनाक चीज है यानी रिस्क दोनों में है मैं ये नहीं कह रहा रिस्क उसमें भी है रिस्क इसमें भी है तो जो लेसर रिस्क इसमें है कि आप उसकी ग्रोथ और डेवलपमेंट के लिहाज से लेट हिम और हर डू यू वांट अगर अपॉर्चुनिटी है बाहर जाने की या हॉस्टल में रहने की तो ये खुद एक एक्सपीरियंस है नेट सेल्फ इससे बहुत कॉन्फिडेंस हासिल होता है इससे इंसान बहुत सीखता है इसमें गलतियां भी ज्यादा होती हैं सीखना भी ज्यादा पड़ता है जितनी ज्यादा गलतियां होंगी उतना ज्यादा सीखने का भी इम्कान होगा और देखिए इंसान को अल्लाह ने ऐसा बनाया है कि वो बाज लोग ऐसे होते हैं बल्कि हम में से ज्यादातर लोग वो होते हैं कि बहुत सारे मिसाइल में हम गलतियां करते हैं और सीखते हैं यानी कोई थप्पड़ पड़ता है तो हम कहते हैं अच्छा आप इस रस्ते पर नहीं जाना तो ये जो कहते हैं ना कि लर्निंग बाय मिस्टेक्स दिस इज अ पैटर्न ऑफ लाइफ दैट ऑल ऑफ अस गो थ्रू तो ये इसके इसको एक्सेप्ट कर लें कि गलतियां होंगी बहुत सारे मसले पैदा होंगे लेकिन अगर लर्न करना है तो इसी तरह हम लर्न करेंगे कि वो बच्चा वो एक्सपीरियंस करेगा वो खतरा मोल लेगा उसको पता चलेगा कि देखें इसके बुरे रिजल्ट आए हैं और फिर वो सीखेगा उससे तो ये जो है ना टू लर्न टू लेट गो एंड लेट योर चाइल्ड लर्न थ्रू हिज मिस्टेक्स बाय लेट हिम इम और हर कमिट दो मिस्टेक्स ये इंपॉर्टेंट है और इसके लिए आपको सबर चाहिए इस सबर का दामन अपने पास रखिए खुदा से दुआ कीजिए बच्चे से फ्रेंडशिप डेवलप कीजिए और कोई क्या मत नहीं इंशाल्लाह आएगी ये सब चीजें होती रहेंगी कुछ हद से बढ़ जाती हैं बाद दफा चीजें लेकिन एज ए सेड कि जो दूसरा चांस है जिसमें आप बच्चे को या दूसरा जो ऑप्शन है कि आप बच्चे को आप बिल्कुल एक कोने में लगा दें और हर लिहाज से प्रोटेक्ट करें तो ये भी एक ऐसी चीज है जो मैं रिकमेंड नहीं करता मतलब मेरे नजदीक इसमें इस, इस रिस्क ज्यादा है बिकॉज इसके नतीजे में आप अपने बच्चे को सोसाइटी से भी काट देते हैं उसके कॉन्फिडेंस को भी टेंट करते हैं और उसके अंदर की जो सलाहियत है वो नशो नमा नहीं पाती जी थैंक यू जी गजल प्लीज गो हेड जी डॉक्टर शदाब गॉट अनदर क्वेश्चन इन द पार्टिसिपेंट इज आस्किंग दैट इफ चाइल्ड इज इरिटेटेड विद साउंड हाउ कैन वी हेल्प हिम बिकॉज़ हिज हैबिट ऑफ मेकिंग दैट साउंड इरिटेट्स द रेस्ट ऑफ द हाउस मेंबर्स एंड इट्स स्पॉइलिंग द घर का सुकून एज आई सेड केस में वी वुड नीड मोर स्पेसिफिक्स टू अंडरस्टैंड कि व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अ साउंड इज योर शी मेकिंग और is it something that is uh, other it's at times you just get a bad habit at times it is a ocd is some kind of obsessive compulsive disorder hota hai so you have to realize maybe, maybe it's a medical condition or it could be anything that is related to when a child sees something or hears something it just etches on his or her mind and uh, he or she starts repeating it so it all depends what exactly uh, it's re- being referred to and as i said if more specifics can be given i can be more specific in my advice too thank you sir uh, जी शमाइन प्लीज आप सवाल पूछिए यस अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन अंकल तो आपने कहा था कि लेट योर किड्स मेक मिस्टेक्स है ना तो आप इस बात को कैसे जस्टिफाई करेंगे कि ठीक है मिस्टेक्स करना बिकॉज़ आजकल की मिस्टेक्स आरंट लाइक स्मॉल मिस्टेक्स कि यू लाइक मिस अ टैक्सी और समथिंग आजकल की मिस्टेक्स आर लाइक बिग मिस्टेक्स इनको आप बाद में सही भी नहीं कर सकते नहीं देखिए मैं जब कह रहा हूँ ना कि यू हैव टू लेट द मेक मिस्टेक्स उसका पीछे ये बात है कि यू हैव डन ऑल दैट यू कुड हैव डन आप उनको समझाएं उनको बताएं उनको आगाह करें कि व्हाट यू आर डूइंग इट कुड बी डिजास्टरस इट कुड बी नॉट कंड्यूसिव एट ऑल तो अपने आप को सजेशन की जगह पे रखें ये जरूर करें लेकिन एक है आप हाथ पकड़ लें कि भाई बेटा ये नहीं करना आप यहां नहीं जा सकते ये है जो जगह मैं जहां से कह रहा था कि अगर आपने अपनी जिम्मेदारी पूरी कर ली है तो फिर लेट देम डू वट दे लाइक और उसमें गलतियां होती हैं तो फिर वो गलती करके ही सीखेंगे तो कुछ लोग दुनिया में ऐसे होते हैं जो गलती करके सीखते हैं तो हाथ पकड़ के जो गलती से रोकना है वो सिर्फ छोटे बच्चों का होता है उस पर तो आप हाथ मतलब बच्चा सड़क क्रॉस कर रहा है उसको पता है वहां उसको नहीं पता गाड़ी आ रही है ये तो आपने तो करना ही करना है लेकिन जब बच्चा बड़े हो जाते हैं दे बिकम अवेयर ऑफ देर एनवायरमेंट तो फिर आपका जो रोल है वो सजेशन की जगह पर रहना चाहिए फिर आप हाथ पकड़ के रोकेंगे तो उसका नुकसान होगा और उनको शेयर करें उनको बताएं एज अ कंसर्न पेरेंट के देखिए दिस इज समथिंग दैट माइट एडवर्सली इफेक्ट योर लाइफ बट यू आर द पर्सन टेक द फाइनल डिसीजन 
तो वहां है जो आपने डिसीजन लेना है यू नॉट जस्ट लिविंग दैम के आप जो मर्जी करें आप अपना रोल तो आपने अदा करना है बस जबरदस्ती नहीं करनी है अंकल आई एम द किड हियर आई एम नॉट द मॉम ओहो ओके सो व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज दैट इफ योर मॉम इज लिसनिंग और योर डैड इज लिसनिंग देन ही और शी शुड मेक नॉट दैट आई मीन एज एन एडल्ट यू शुड हैव योर ओन लाइफ टू लिव यू शुड हैव दिस ऑपर्चुनिटी to plan out your own life because god has given you this opportunity ye khud this is a, it's a god given freedom and i am no one to, to interfere as a parent in your god given freedom all i can do is as a parent as a concerned parent i can present my submissions to you and that is all and then the final decision regarding everything has to be made by you okay thank you so much shahzad sir thank you we have taken uh, more of your time than uh, uh, originally okay. planned So, But so this has been pleasure. very helpful. Mm-hmm. I think I am getting a lot of questions directly on WhatsApp as well. Separately, I'll try to route them to you later or mm-hmm. to Ghazal. Or right. and uh, just to sum it up, some uh, questions. I say I have taken a few notes where people have uh, delved into other topics for which we can mm-hmm. maybe arrange separately. Uh, mm-hmm. But. Uh, 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 to some of my friends on the group here i have shared your book already on parenting and other stuff but maybe mm. uh, a lot of questions can get answered through that so we can take right. it up separately so thank you I have very a, much the, uh, one last thing i have a series that i have done i think uh, ghazal might be knowing it's called modern challenges to parenting it's a more detailed series uh, on 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 youtube i think if i remember correctly so for those of you who would, would not like to read they can always listen as well i think it is modern uh, modern challenges to parenting if i'm not mistaken or something okay. it's there's a, it's a, it's a playlist on, on my youtube channel i think ghazal will 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 let you know ji i just okay we'll share the link ji um i have shared the link in the chat box but um if we don't have time right now if any one of you want to follow up um on any programs please subscribe to dr shadad urdu channel as well as on english channel so if you type in the name on youtube you will get definitely get those programs and on english channel there is actually multiple series which have been done on parenting so i'm sure they will be very very helpful to you um thank you thank you once again shadad sir and uh, thank you everyone my pleasure okay thank you